Hello everybody, this is Buck WSR Weezer coming to you today with a video about this 2000 Oldsmobile Silhouette minivan. It's got a 3.4 liter fuel injected V6 engine. Like pretty much all of them do. Which is the same engine in this and many other GM vehicles. This is a 2000. Actually, I got the Pontiac version transport, the 1997 model, here. So I got two of these vans. The 2000 differs in this respect. It has, beginning in 2000, the secondary air injection system. And that's what I'm having trouble with on this silhouette. And I'm trying to resolve it because uh, this baby's due for inspection this month, July 2016. But there's a problem with the secondary air injection system. The dash on the light on the dash is lit up, and with the code reader, we found code P0410 secondary air injection system. The secondary air injection system is really an emissions related item. It consists of an electric air pump, which is located here at the front of the engine. You actually access it through the wheel well. And it also consists of a couple diverter valves. One here at the front of the engine. One further in the back, which is impossible to see at this point until we move some of those other components out of the way. The secondary air injection system only comes into play on a cold start. When you start it up, it run, the air pump runs for about a minute. Vacuum controlled diverter valves open to allow air to be pumped into the exhaust system. That's why you've got a diverter valve on the front and the back to get the uh, tie into the exhaust manifolds on both sides. It only runs for about a minute and supposedly this is to heat up your catalytic converter more quickly and thereby cut down on emissions. It's frustrating to me because this system has nothing to do with the performance of your engine. It's purely emissions related. But what I hate is that little light on the dash that's going to keep me from passing inspection if we don't resolve it. I've already replaced the air pump but today we're working on the diverter valve so I want to show you how to test those valves. And I know that one of them's bad, and I'll show you how I know that. And then we'll work on replacing it. So here we go. This diverter valve here at the front of the engine is easy to access. So let's start with this one. I've hooked it up to a vacuum pump, and I'm hoping you can see that gauge. A good diverter valve should be able to hold vacuum because it's vacuum controlled. So I put the vacuum gauge on it, pump it up, and you can see that, I hope you can see that needle is steady. It's not moving. It's not losing vacuum. That's cool. However, the one in the back is a different story. And I'm going to try to give you a shot of that. Not that you'll be able to see the valve but I can put the uh, vacuum hose on it and you should be able to see the the vacuum pump gauge. Alright, so we're going to try that. Let's see if that, that'll work for you. Hi, babe. Yeah, I'm doing a video. Alright, so I've got the... Uh, I've got the, the vacuum tube on the uh, top of the diverter valve. And if you can see that dial, I, I can't get it to hold vacuum at all. So that's the uh, diverter valve that we need to change out. I've got the new one right here. And in fact, what we, what we can do is maybe I can put the uh, maybe I could put the uh, vacuum gauge on that and you can see that this one is holding vacuum all right 
by the way here's the diverter valve you got the air intake tube and when it opens the vacuum hose connects up here and when it opens the air is forwarded through this tube which connects to the exhaust manifold so we connect a vacuum hose right here not getting a good not getting a good uh, connection here that doesn't look like it's holding I think what it is is I'm just not getting a tight fit with the uh, with the hose Try that again. Be All right, right what back. I think's happening here is the inside diameter of my uh, vacuum tube that I'm using here for this test is just a little too big, and so I'm not not getting a good seal there. But there you go. You can see that's holding vacuum as it should. So this is our new valve, and of course, Murphy's law. It's the di diverter valve all the way in the on the back side of the engine there that we're going to have to access and try to replace. I would say it's going to be a bit of a pain. I'm going to start by removing some of those uh, ignition components and wires that are hanging there and hopefully this won't be too difficult. Alright, the first thing I've done is take off the spark plug wires off of the ignition pack back there. You can see it's a row of six right in a row. It's three packs, two wires each. And I've, I've numbered my wires because you don't want to get mixed up here. And down here I've just made a little chart to myself of the order in which they plug onto those six terminals. This is just to keep me uh, straight and make sure I put them back on the same order in which I took them off. Next I'm going to have to move them out of the way. I'm going to have to move this hose, this this group of wires, this vacuum modulator, I'm making up the name, I don't know what it's called. And I'm going to have to remove these ignition packs. I've done all this before on different projects. I don't even know if you can see it, but behind there where my finger's pointing is the uh, diverter valve that we need to access. And frankly, when stuff's in the way, you just got to move it out of the way. So you can do the work that you need to do. Let's get going with that. Okay, we're, we're back and we have obtained clear access to that rear diverter valve. I moved a lot of stuff out of the way. Ignition module, packs, brackets, connectors, vacuum tubing. And I have gotten to the point where uh, I'm not intimidated to move things out of the way. You really have to. And we will figure out how to get it all back together when uh, the time comes. It'll be sort of a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but it'll be fun. So here's the rear diverter valve. That's the bad guy. He's coming out. And we've got the new one right here to go in. Now what I had discovered is that the the inlet tube and the exhaust pipe that had come with this kit are actually the ones that correspond here to the front diverter valve. Nonetheless, the diverter valve itself is identical front or rear. So I'm going to use the inlet tube from the back that is already there. I'm going to use the same exhaust pipe that was already connected and it's just the valve itself that we're going to replace so to take this valve off simply have two 10 millimeter screws here at the bottom and then to re release this uh, air pipe hopefully that won't be too much of a chore it is a little tight in there but I think we'll be able to do it so that's our next step here we go well, there you go. We're looking at the new 
diverter valve in place. Connected the exhaust pipe at the bottom. The air, air pipe there. The hardest part of getting the old one off was that air pipe with this clamp. This style of clamp is such a pain. It's under high tension, high compression. And I didn't... I decided not to reuse it. I went with those kind that are easier to deal with. At least for me, I prefer that particular style. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're going to put it all back together. Should be fun. And, uh... Sort of just the reverse of what we did to move all the stuff out of the way. Here we go. All right, this project's about done, people. The new diverter valve is thoroughly hidden now behind all the other things that sit on top of the engine there. Everything's connected back up again, and I'm hoping that this will be the solution to that trouble code P0410. I think what I might do is just erase the codes and uh, see if it sets itself again. But hopefully we have resolved that. Got a new pump, which I did previously, a new diverter valve, and hopefully we'll be good to go. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one.